Hey there, welcome to today's marketing session. I'm sure by now, and if you're watching this, you know how important social media is to any business. <clears throat> Whether you sell a product, a service, you're an influencer, you are putting yourself out there as a personal brand, as an entrepreneur, I hope that you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is essential to use social media for your business. But at the same time, it can also really hurt your business. So I'm going to share with you today 15 plus, I think I actually have like 20, 20 ways that you could actually be damaging your business with your social media marketing. Okay. So if you would like the notes on this, drop the word notes down below and I will make sure to get them to you via messenger once they are ready. And this is something that I will be completely honest with you. If you've been following along for quite some time now, you know that I'm no BS and I will admit I have done some of these things in the past myself. Okay. So I've definitely learned from them and I want to share this because I still find people doing this so often. Okay. So if you are new to the page, welcome. My name is Gina Tassinelli. I'm the owner and founder of Hype Media. We are a boutique social media marketing agency, and we support small business owners as well as entrepreneurs with done for you services and female entrepreneurs with done with you services through our coaching one on one program and group coaching programs. So what we do for our clients, both one on one and when we're doing their marketing for them is a focus on engaging with an ideal audience, being able to show up to your ideal audience and make a bigger impact and bring in more business. So I'm so happy that you're here. If you hear something that you absolutely are like, wow, I didn't know, give me a hashtag wow and feel free also to sprinkle this in your newsfeed. Maybe you have business friends that could really use some of these tips. Okay. So let's get started. And as you're coming on, listen, if you have any questions during this, like don't feel bad. Don't be shy. Drop them, drop them down below. Okay. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I am here to support you. That's why I come on every single week to do this because as an entrepreneur myself, I want to be able to support other entrepreneurs. Um, honestly, we are in this together and there are some things that you should stay away from doing and it's really easy to fall in the trap of doing that. Okay. So number one, and I, I do see this often and I'm going to tell you the opposite side to it as well, but it's talking all about yourself and your products and your service. That is one of the main things that I see happening quite often. And I used to do it too. So, Hey, I, I, I've been there before I learned how important it was to build my personal brand, not just my agency. I used to do this. I would constantly vomit what we had to offer as an agency, our services or my products with my other business. I, I'm also an image consultant to female entrepreneurs. But when I started with the style rebel mama, I also pushed a lot of the jewelry products that I represent. And so that was my focus. And I know as an entrepreneur, especially we want to make that instant sale, right? We're in business for ourselves. So it's so hard not to want to make money right away. Constantly bragging about your business, your products, your services is going to turn people off. People want to hear about what's in it for them first. So if you start with that mindset, thinking about how can I actually be a problem solver to my ideal audience? How can I help them? How can I be of service? Then you'll see that your social media will be a lot more effective. So too much self-promotion is a big no-no, okay? Now on the other side of this, you definitely do want to share your experience maybe with a client, maybe a testimonial, things like that. Things that can tell a story and that people can resonate with and relate to. Number two, here's another one that I see quite often when I do 
free Facebook reviews, when you are being antisocial on social media. Social media is meant to be social. So something that I see quite often is when my soon-to-be clients, I do a Facebook review for them and they tell me I have no engagement, nobody's seeing my posts, but I look at their Facebook personal profile as well as their business profile and they're not conversing, they're not being social, nowhere. Or I see them posting a lot on their business profile but nothing on their personal profile. And that's being antisocial. In order for people, especially as entrepreneurs, in order for people to see us and for us to gain that visibility, we have to put ourselves out there, not just in business, but also in person, virtually, but in person. I think you know what I mean. So be social on your personal profile. And it's okay to talk a little bit about business. I typically suggest you 80% personal, 20% professional on your personal profile and on your business it's vice versa and you it's okay to throw in some personal things on your business because it makes you look like a real human which you are right so people want to connect with you as a human being not with your product so get social number three is treating your social media as a side project here's the thing if you are trying to use this medium for business, it cannot be a side project. It takes a commitment. And you have two options. You either can do it yourself or you can hire. There's amazing virtual assistants. I have them to help you do it for you. Or you can hire an agency like Hype Media to do it for you. It just really depends on your budget. So if you are putting yourself out there as a personal brand, you definitely want to learn the ins and outs of it. And I know Robin knows because she's one of my amazing members inside of the Splash Marketing Collective. And that's why we built this group coaching program in addition to the one-on-one -on -one co coaching program is because as an entrepreneur, you really do need to know the ins and outs of social media so that you can put yourself out there as a personal brand instead of as a makeup line or, um, you know, clothing line or a yoga, just, you know, your yoga program. You want to build a personality with your brand. And that is built through putting you yourself out there. It's going to increase your, your conversions. And it's going to get you more leads, but you definitely need to put the time and effort into it. And there are strategies that you can use so that you're not constantly only doing social media because that's not effective either and you're going to get burnt out. So there's many programs, there's courses, um, even Facebook has the blueprint program but get into something. And if you're interested in learning more about the Splash Marketing Collective or one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, um, drop the word splash and I'll reach back out to, to you and do a 30 minute complimentary uh, strategy assessment call with you, okay? All right, so number four, that's super important too, all of these honestly are really important, is when you're not consistent on your social media. So if you say okay i posted twice this week i'm that's good here's the thing that's good for you but it's not good for your ideal audience so don't i don't want to use the word selfish but it is a little bit selfish to not be consistent because if you truly want to serve the audience that is your tribe is your ideal audience they need to see you they want to see you as the expert. And so they need to hear from you more than twice a week. So I suggest posting once a day, okay? And you honestly don't need to do more than that. I, I don't think that you do. Um, you also don't need huge numbers. You don't need a huge following to make it, to be successful. You see how many people follow this page, right? You also, if you go check my Instagram for Hype Media, I don't even have a thousand followers yet. Um, now, Style Rebel, 
Rebel Mama is a little bit different because I also put a lot more energy in that before hype media. But we have shifted gears here. And because I, when I started to do my one-on-one -on -one coaching and my group coaching, it's super important for people to see my face more, not just the face of my logo, okay? And you definitely do need that consistency to be shown and seen as the expert. Number five, you don't want to ignore your followers. So I recently ran some ads for a client and I noticed that the ads that they had run previously had no attention. They had all of these comments and likes and all this on their ads, but they never once replied to any comments. They never invited more people to like their page and to follow them and they never sent out any messages. So you're losing out on opportunities there when you ignore your followers. So don't ignore them. And you want to do it timely because it will kick it up a notch for you in the algorithm. It's really, really important. Do you guys have any questions? Let me know. Don't, again, don't be shy. I'm happy to answer them while I'm on. Um, and I will go back and answer any questions as well for anybody watching on the replay. Number six is using way too much automation. So there are several, I mean, probably hundreds, third-party tools that you can use, for example, to schedule your posts, okay? Something that will, there's actually, there's like different thoughts about this, but what I notice is when I use an outside third-party tool to schedule my posts, especially here inside of this platform, and Instagram, my reach is not as good as it could be if I actually schedule inside of Creator Studio. That's there, it's a free tool, it's amazing. If you're not using it, you want to use it, okay? So if you manage a page or if you are the owner of a business page or um, even an Instagram business, I believe if you just have an Instagram business profile, you probably could also get into Creator Studio, you want to get into Creator Studio. And I believe it's facebook.com forward slash Creator Studio, um, something like this. Actually, you know what? I will look it up for you guys right now. It's business.facebook.com forward slash Creator Studio, okay? So um, when you first go there, you probably have to set up your account. It's free. Um, and then you add your pages and your uh, Instagram business <clears throat> profiles in there. But sometimes this automation can go wrong. You know, sometimes I actually, I'm not like, this has happened to us as an agency. We have actually accidentally posted or scheduled a post to post on what we thought was one client's page and it posted on one of my pages. And so that can be a little bit embarrassing. We caught it really quickly. So um, I don't think anybody probably saw it or noticed, but that can happen. So too much automation can go wrong. And it's really nice too when you can actually, you know, if you plan things out ahead of time, maybe using something like Trello, which is what we use, or a Google spreadsheet, you can plan ahead of time. But then instead of constantly doing automation, go back into those tools and then copy and paste directly into a post. Um, but do that ahead of time also, at least the planning part, all right? Number seven is not measuring, not checking your analytics, whether it's on your Facebook business page or Instagram or even um, inside of your group. Check on those insights. Find out what's working, what's not working. You can get so much information when you are looking into your analytics, including what kinds of posts are working better than others. And what that can tell you is it'll give you re really good insight into what type of post your audience really likes? What do they really resonate with? And then you just create more of those similar posts. So definitely check it, check out your insights, okay? Next one is talking too much and not listening. Ask a lot of questions. So if you, are, and I see this a lot with coaches where um, there's a lot of lecturing going on. People do not wanna be lectured. They're not children. They want to learn, they wanna be inspired, they wanna be motivated. But when your posts are constantly telling people what to do, 
versus asking them questions, it's going to be a turnoff. So ask questions in the beginning of your post. And people love to talk about themselves. So it's a great opportunity to find out more about your audience, more about what makes them tick, and more about what doesn't make them tick. Okay? Number eight, or actually that was number eight. Um, number nine is not being current not, or not staying current on current events and topics. So we used to actually schedule some of our social media for our clients a month or even more ahead of time. And what I found was that I was not being at times, especially now with the pandemic, if you're scheduling way too far in advance, you're when that schedule goes or when that post goes to schedule, right, and actually show up on your newsfeed, it could be completely out of line with what's going on in the world right now. So you want to be really relevant. You want to keep people and your audience up to date on things that are going on, even if they don't specifically relate to your business. But for example, if you are in the health insurance business, you don't just have to post about health insurance. You can post about maybe there's a new study on, you know, something health related that just came out. Maybe there is a, um, a new uh, way of cooking. Maybe there's a new recipe. Maybe there's um, a, an event in your community that has to do with fitness that you want to post about. So stay relevant with what's going on in your community, in the world. Um, and also be really appropriate and conscious about that when you are posting as well. Number 10 is, and this actually goes back to one of the earlier ones that I mentioned, but when you forget that people buy from people, it's a big mistake. So tell some jokes. Have fun, entertain, distract them. Share a funny meme, share a funny picture of you in your office. You know, um, I've actually shared a picture of what it looks like in front of me and behind me without this partition behind me. So just be real because people really wanna connect with other human beings. And they're more likely to continue to follow you and buy from you as loyal clients or customers when they have a connection with you. They're not actually buying the product from the product, right? They're buying the product from you or the service from you as a human being, not as your service. So please don't forget that one. That one is so important. And part of being able to not forget that is to build your business as a personal brand versus as a service that you offer or a product that you offer. Um, number 11 is constantly repeating yourself. So I do believe that repurposing content is really, really a simple way and effective way to use one piece of content in various places around, you know, online. But you also don't want to constantly be saying the same thing. Okay. So you could actually use one piece of content and then rotate it around different platforms and then use that same piece of content again, but just edit it. You know, don't use the same image. Don't use the same exact wording, rephrase the words a bit, and you still don't have to recreate an entire new post or come up, come up with an entire new thing. It's just re giving it a refresh and changing the wording around. Number 12, this one I see very often, and I will tell you, I have been, um, a definite, I definitely fall into this trap because, you know, we get busy with life, we get busy with business, but it's winging it. When you don't have a plan in action, this is something that we are really working hard on inside of the Splash Marketing Collective over the last couple of weeks. And it's really getting intentional with your posts and planning ahead. That way your effort is much more effective and in the long run, it's going to be you're, you're going to gain more conversions when you're actually planning out your content and not just winging it just because you, you know, it's eight o'clock at night and you forgot to post something. OK. Number 
13. And this one I see so much of. You can really turn your audience off when you are dropping like really useless content just to drop content. So if you have nothing valuable to post, just don't post. It actually could hurt your social media profile versus helping it because it's not going to gain you engagement and it's just going to be annoying and people can probably find better content somewhere else. So make and again, planning ahead of time is really going to help with this as well. Number 14 is when you are being sloppy, okay, double check what you're putting out there. And I too am uh, definitely, I've definitely done this. And it's, you know, it's quite embarrassing when you spell something wrong, when you have the punctuation wrong, um, things like that. So especially if you're writing a blog post or you're putting text on top of an image, that's really hard to edit because then you got to take the whole thing down. Um, if, if you do a grammatical error inside of a post, inside of a caption, that's easier to edit. But when it's on an image, and I've actually done this, I've actually done Pinterest, and my daughter pointed it out to me. We are all human, right? But it happens. So it happens, but it can also be taken care of and um, can really be unnecessary for it to happen when you double check things. Number 15 is when you're not taking social media seriously. So if you're not wanting to use social media to grow your business, then it's okay, don't take it seriously. But if you are, and you're listening to this right now, you probably are wanting to take it seriously. So take it seriously. Make it a, an integral part of your marketing strategy, okay? And when I see strategy, that is exactly what I mean, strategize. So when you are posting content, when you're coming up with a program, when you're creating a landing page, you want to really strategize and make sure that what you're delivering, what you're communicating is coming off in a way that's going to serve others first serve yourself. So if you're going to take it seriously and you really want to use it to help your business grow, then use it to serve others and I promise you that it will help your business grow. Next up, so these are five bonus ones, okay? Um, well, I know for sure I've got an extra one because this just happened to me today. So one thing that I do see quite often is inside of groups, okay? So let's say this is number 16. Inside of groups is when somebody um, because you can really use groups to increase your network and to make more human connections and then make new business connections, friendships. But one, one thing that I do see often is when somebody posts something in a group that's valid, that's going to support others, and then you comment with your website or you comment trying to use that opportunity because you see there's a lot of engagement on that post to self-serve yourself. That's kind of um, a double. Yeah, that didn't make sense. But you know what I mean. For To self-serve. That's a big no-no. And that is such a turnoff. Okay, so please don't do that. It's not nice either. Number 17. This actually just recently happened to me. I have, you know, quite a few connections. But I recently got reached out by somebody that I haven't spoken to in like two years. And they started their personal message to me with, hi, how are you? And then kept on with what they wanted to say to me. So that's number 17. Hi, how are you is not a real, it's not a real thing. I know here we are so used to saying, hi, how are you? But instead say, Hey, I noticed, you know, do a little bit of research before you reach out to somebody that you haven't spoken to in a long time, that you haven't connected with in a long time. Go on their Facebook profile, go on their Instagram, see what they've been up to and have a reason to like give that icebreaker to start communicating with them. So when they reached out to me and then, and they said, hi, how are you? 
I think you'd be interested in blah, 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 blah. First of all, you haven't spoken to me in two years. So how do you know what I'm interested in? Right? So that's number 18. Don't assume that you're the person that you are reaching out to is interested in anything that is also self-serving. So instead reword it really pra And this takes honestly a lot of practice, but I do see this a lot within direct sales. And I know this because I represent a direct sales company with my style business. I have for over 11 years. So I'm, I'm in direct sales in you know, that regard, but instead of coming off, like you want to again, make a sale, how about asking or saying something to the effect of, if I could show you how to, you know, be more organized in your business, would you be interested in that? Ask a question. Don't assume that they really might be interested in something. Okay. Number, what number am I on? I think number 19 now. Um, number 19. In your pro personal profile, when you are posting something about your business, don't just tag people that you think might be interested in that. That happens so often. I get tagged so many times. And I'm not talking about like tagging because they're in a picture with you or um, maybe it's a client that you want to tag because you're giving a testimonial about a story that you had with them. I'm saying like if you are posting a product and you start tagging everybody that you think would be interested in that product. That's a big no-no. That's kind of um, not offensive, but it's kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's, um, it's, it's just not, it's not really social media etiquette, really, you know, you're, um, you're being really disruptive and I don't know, it's kind of rude. So it's kind of that like salesy, like creepy feeling, right? You don't want to do that. Okay. So my last tip is if you feel that you are not putting yourself out there as a personal brand, or maybe you don't even know what that means. You're not sure what, you know, what's the purpose? I'm not an influencer. Why should I put myself out there as a personal brand? If you are the face of your business, so if you are maybe in direct sales, if you are maybe an agent of some sort, real estate, insurance, um, if you are a coach, if you are a boutique owner, um, something like that, it's so imperative to put yourself out there as a personal brand. If you guys have any questions, and you're watching this on the replay, remember, do not be shy. Drop them down below. I always come back and I respond to everybody. And I will see you next Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And by the way, in that free group, we do trainings every Monday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time as well. All right. So have a fabulous rest of the week and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.